I'm at the One Moto Show here in Portland, Oregon, and aside from seeing all of these beautiful machines, I had the opportunity to ride a bunch of Triumph motorcycles this weekend. If you've watched my previous videos, hopefully you've come to know me as a fairly honest and sincere type of guy, so I want you to know that I'm not trying to sell you anything here. I'm in no way affiliated with Triumph, except that I really dig their stuff, and I just love motorcycles in general. As an older rider myself, I sometimes find it difficult to find content geared toward us. I wanted to take you on a ride on two separate but very similar bikes, because I think they'd be really fine choices for just about anyone, but especially older riders looking for something manageable, or the first time rider looking to get a great beginner bike without breaking the bank. And I'll be upfront in saying I'm completely biased here in that one of these bikes is probably my next bike. I want something to adventure on, but my style of adventure is pretty tame. Fire roads, camping, and exploring in the woods, that kind of thing. So we'll be looking at the Triumph Scrambler 400X, which I really do think I'm going to buy soon, and its sibling, the Speed 400. Both are new models for Triumph, and I really think they knocked it out of the park with both of these. First we'll take the Scrambler first bin, since I think that's the one I have my heart set on. Then we'll take a look at the street version of that, the Speed 400. Stick around, I had a lot of fun riding these bikes and I think you'll enjoy seeing them ridden in the real world by a normal, everyday, older biker. Today I'm going to take for a ride a bike that I'm seriously considering buying. This is the Triumph Scrambler 400X. This bike is pretty damn cool, I have to say. This looks like it would be a whole lot of fun on trail roads, of which I've got a lot here in the Portland, Oregon area. And uh, it's cheap. It's like about $5,000 US out the door. Well, not out the door, because you have to pay for all the setup and all that stuff. but. The list price is 5000 somewhere around there. Anyway, so let's go take this for a ride and see what she can do. So right off the bat, it is a little taller than my T120 by about, you know, a foot. Not really, but I can, uh, I heard a lot of stories that people were uncomfortable because, um, because of the height. But I'm finding that I can tiptoe just fine and it's not a very heavy bike and to be honest it doesn't feel a whole lot different than my Vespa GTS as far as height goes this is pretty much exactly how it feels to sit on my on my Vespa except my Vespa I think is a little wider I don't know let's take a first spin see what happens yeah that sound cool the gearing on this is very interesting I'll, I'll, I'll tell you about that in a second First gear is kind of not even there. Um, I get why it's I get why it's geared like this, and uh, it's fine. It's actually cool, but you, it just takes a little bit of getting used to. I'm in third gear now. The problem that I think I'm going to have is coming up to stops. I'm going to want to think that I'm in like second gear when I'm in fifth, and I'm going to stall this thing because, uh, yeah, I uh, I'm not used to it. See, it's got a little bit of pep. The seating position is very comfortable. The handlebars are very, uh, very up top. Um, if you like that sort of thing, you will like this a lot. The gentleman in front of me is test riding the Triumph Rocket. That thing look cool? I'm gonna test ride that later, I think. It's uh, 2,500 cc's, I believe, and it's about the size of a small, uh, of a small Hyundai car. <laughs> okay, first impressions. I love this bike. Okay, I'm in fourth gear now, and going, well, whatever. So, downshifting, when you're coming up to a light, you have to downshift through like four or five gears, and that's what I'm not used to. Ha, ha, ha. 
<laughs> he likes it. <laughs> this is great. So, this is my second day at the One Moto Show. Okay, I am not keeping up to a rocket, but ah, this thing flies actually. Uh, it moves. I have no complaints in the speed department. None. I mean, yeah, I'm not going to be racing a uh, rocket or pretty much anything, but this isn't a race bike. Um, this is actually the perfect, this actually feels like the perfect city commuter. Um, because it's geared so low, you can ride around in second or third all day. You can ride, no, you could definitely ride around in third all day, I think. Um, when I'm on my T120, what happens is I will run between first and second all day and it's back and forth, back and forth. And see, I'm in second now. I need to get into first. I think that I could run this in third around the city pretty much all day. It's got a pretty wide power band. Oh, that first gear takes a lot to get used to though. Okay, so this is third. And I can get down comfortably to probably 20 if I really wanted to. And then I'm sure it'll go up to about 40. I'm not anywhere near redlining this. Oh yeah. Okay, this is outstanding. I completely lost track of the route that I'm supposed to be on. So hopefully the guy in front of me knows what we're doing, because I don't anymore. I'm at the One Moto Show here in Portland, Oregon, by the way, and uh, what a great show it's been so far. There's so many bikes inside, but I've spent like 10 minutes inside because everything outside is so much cooler, um, especially the uh, especially the Triumph uh, Test Ride van. They've got, they've got Bonnevilles, they've got the Rocket, they've got the Scramblers, they've got all kinds of stuff. Uh, you basically get a card from them, you sign up, you give them your info, and you can take out any bike you want. So you can imagine that rather than being inside, this is this is what I'm doing today. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, this is cool. Oh, the switches feel nice. Okay. It handles, let's see. Let's see how it handles. I guess we're getting into a little bit of the twistier roads here. And uh, I'm in fifth gear. <laughs> okay. I'm in fifth gear going, what, 35? Okay. I guess I just gotta get used to revving this higher because I don't, I don't obviously rev my T120 this high, usually, like, you know, sustained. But, oh my goodness, this is fun. Hey, this has got some kick, no joke. There was a little, a uh, little bit of vibration going on there, but nothing that I think would deter me from taking this out on a, on a highway. Oh, hell yeah, fourth gear. Okay, almost red did I think, I don't know. Oh. Okay, this is a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. I can almost... I can almost see myself walking into the Triumph dealership today with my credit card in my hand being like, Hey, I, I need one of those. Do you have it in green? And they'll say, No, we only have it in purple. And I'll say, Yeah, I'm like, yeah purple's fine. I'll take purple. They don't have it in purple, but you know what I'm saying. Oh, wow, this is nice. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Going 15 miles an hour in third gear. That's fun. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm uphill. I'm stopped at a red light uphill. Um, and I'm on my, you know, I'm on my tippy toes a little bit. But in no way does this feel uncomfortable or intimidating. Uh, I haven't even thought about it. The height. Uh, the seat height is, um, it's fine. Oh. This is a lot of fun. This is a lot of fun. Like I said earlier, um, I spend a lot of time in the woods. I like to go camping. Um, I go out to, to, I go out to like the Mount Hood area here in Oregon, and uh, we do dispersed camping. So we'll just pack up and go and find some place to camp. It's not like you know you need a reservation or anything. You just go and you find empty, beautiful land and you camp on it. The idea of doing that on this motorcycle just brings every smile possible to my face. Um, and I, I'm pretty sure, knowing what I know about this bike so far, having ridden it and done the research, this would handle those fire roads just fine. Um, I would assume that at some point when these tires wore down, uh, these are Metzlers, I think I would want to get something a little more, uh, a little knobbier, I guess. But for the road, these these feel great. 
Oh, I really like this bike. You know, my T120 has, what, three times the CCs of this bike? But really, it doesn't matter. Sure, the extra power is nice, but the real advantage of, you know, the T120 is it's just, it's a lot smoother, obviously, but this, ha this bike has a whole different vibe, and I like it. Like, not... I can't get it first, okay. Not, um, I'm not saying this would at all even remotely replace my T120, because I love that bike. Um, but this would be an amazing addition. I'd have three bikes in my stable, I'd have, okay. Ooh. I'd have this, I'd have my T120, and I'd have my Vespa GTS. I think with that, I would have all my bases covered. Oh, let's see, let's see what this can do. Oh, yes, okay. That did not leave me disappointed. I'm not disappointed. And, uh, yeah, it handles nice. I rode the Daytona 660 yesterday. That was quite an experience, speaking of handling and, and, uh, and, and things. <laughs> I've never ridden a sport bike like that before, and, um, I'm not saying I don't want one. Um, oh boy, it was fun. I could see myself someday. No. Okay. Well, I'm feeling some vibration in the foot pegs, but nothing serious at all. Nothing to speak of in the handlebars. Um, yeah, okay. I could definitely see taking this out on the highway, no problem. I'm not exactly sure what the top speed is. I want to say it's 90, but I'm not really sure. I don't really care. Uh, I just I just proved that I have enough speed for everything I need. So the thing is, yeah, it's just it, the, the only thing that's uh, the only thing that's really taken any getting used to is the gearing. But that's to be expected on a on a on a scrambler, I guess. You know, see now in third, I feel like I should be already in second or first. So I have to remember to downshift a hundred times. <laughs> Other than that. Oh, yeah. Huh. It's not lacking in the pickup department. It's really not. I don't know that I would ever need any more than that. <laughs> I'm not a speed racer. I am, uh, I'm just a guy. He lives in Portland with an extra motorcycle. Alright, now we're gonna get into a little bit more sort of twisty roads here. I already feel pretty damn comfortable on this bike. The learning curve is short. I'm going up a you know, fairly steep hill and uh, I'm not noticing the engine bogging down or anything trying to get up it. So it's got plenty of power. Plenty of power for what I need. Let's see about the agility here, because this is a, okay. Just gotta get used to the gearing. But yeah. Oh, this is this is just great. This is great. Okay. I'm definitely gonna buy one of these, I think. <laughs> Don't tell my wife. I'm gonna pull over and take a look at this bike. All right, first of all, I hope you can hear it. <laughs> it sounds different in my head. In, let me see. Let me open this. It sounded a little weird reverberating in my uh, in my helmet, but okay. Let's give it a twist. That sounds pretty badass, actually. I'm gonna say that this is a pretty well-made bike. This bike was built in partnership with Bajaj out of India. I, I believe Bajaj makes some um, KTMs. Maybe all of them, I have no idea. Um, but from everything that I can see and comparing it to my T120, um, this, looks, this looks pretty sweet. This looks like quality. Sounds good. I don't know if you're like me, but when I was a kid, I was into BMX um, bicycles, and one of the one of the things you had to have 
was one of these pads. It was like, you know, it was a fad, it was a trend. That and a number plate that went across the front that they called them Haro plates, made by a company called Haro. And uh, I, I never raced a day in my life, but uh, you know, I had it all set up. That's what that reminds me of. This is such a cool little, little throwback to that part of my life. I just want to get back on it. Totally approachable. Nothing to write home about as far as getting on it. Kickstand works just like you would expect. Pies are down. No one home. All right. Off we go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Leaning it. Leans just great. Let's see what this thing could do as far as acceleration. Off the line. Yeah, okay. I'm not left wanting for anything here. Um, well, the brakes, let's try to, let's see if we can get on straight away and give the brakes a little testy testy. Okay, let's go this way now. Oh yeah, brakes work great. The interlock brakes in the back kicked in just a tad, but nothing um, unexpected and um, stopped as well, if not better, than I thought it would for a single disc up front bike. I am impressed. I have to say I'm impressed. All right, who's this bike for? Well, it's for me. I am a 51-year-old dude. Um, I'm in reasonably decent shape. I, would, I don't work out or, you know, <laughs> eat right, but I'm in decent shape, decent health for now, and... Um, I stand about 5'10ish with a 30 inch inseam and again this bike it just fits me it feels just great to me um, no complaints as far as the standover height or anything and which is nice because it gives you that extra clearance you want when you're out on the uh, on the fire roads doing the fire road stuff I'd have no problem using this as a city commuter although the um, the Speed 400 or whatever it's called might be. Street 400? I, I forget what it's called. Um, but anyway, that might be a better bike for commuting. I don't know. But I would have no qualms about commuting on this bike. I would have no qualms about packing this up fairly decently. Not heavily, but decently. And taking a camping for a weekend or whatever. Um, actually, that's exactly what this bike is made for, I think. Um, I don't want to invest my time, energy, or money in a full-scale ADV bike that's going to spend 95% of its time not ADVing, <laughs> right? So this bike, um, I wouldn't feel bad at all about it not spending the majority of its life off-road because it's a lot of fun on-road um, and quite capable. So, I like this bike a lot. I think if you're looking for something that's relatively tame, fun as heck, um, very versatile because you can do a whole bunch of stuff with this bike, and um, most importantly maybe, you know, in the scheme of things, it's cheap. Like I said, it's, it's just over five grand, I think, brand new before fees and stuff like that. I mean, where are you gonna find a bike of this quality with this versatility, with this name behind it, uh, for five grand. I, I just have a feeling that's virtually impossible these days. But Triumph did it. They did it in conjunction with Bajaj, and it works. And uh, kudos to Triumph uh, for doing this, because uh, anything that makes motorcycling more accessible to people who are on limited budgets, or, ooh, okay, limited budgets and whatever, um, I'm, I'm just, I'm grateful for Triumph for doing this. I think this is gonna get a lot of folks out onto the road and more importantly, into the world, into the forest, into the trees. Um, because that's what this, ooh, that's what this bike was made for. So now just, this is a good, a good practice it. Parking it, tip tiptoeing back, but it's totally fine. Got my directional line, of course. 
That's just part for the course for me. Okay. All right. Five stars. 100% five stars. All right, just for comparison, let's try the Speed 400. It's basically the same bike, only um, geared a little differently and lower. It's uh, This might be the perfect city commuter. Um, I'm not really sure, because I have not ridden it yet, but we'll experience it together for the first time. It's a pretty sweet bike. I think this would be a perfect beginner bike um, for someone who's never ridden before but wants a nice quality um, motorcycle to start with. And again, it's like, ju I think this is under $5,000 brand new before um, fees and all that stuff. So uh, let's give it a shot. Okay, right off the bat, I am flat footing. <sighs> let's see. Okay, just sitting on it. It feels familiar, you know, coming from the T120. It feels familiar, it doesn't feel the same. It just feels like, you know, I'm in the same family. This is the cousin, right? Not a brother <laughs> or sister, it's just a cousin. Oh, it's nice and comfortable. It feels, yeah, it feels pretty light on its feet. It's good looking. Yeah, I'd take this. Right. Now, I suspect that the gearing is going to be um, dramatically different on this from the Scrambler. Because the Scrambler, first gear is like here, second gear is here. I have a feeling this is going to be like first gear is here, second gear is here. I think this is going to be mainly a first and second gear bike on, in the city with maybe going up to third once you get out. I don't know what I'm talking about. Let's find out. Let's stop wasting time. Okay. Wow, okay. This is um, different than the Scrambler. But, uh, oh, it feels nice and uh, nimble. Approachable. Okay. Okay. Okay, so far, the gearing doesn't feel dramatically different. Uh, it certainly does feel a little different, but it's, I, I thought it would be a little bit more dramatic than that. Boy, I could, right off the bat, I could tell you this would be a, a fantastic city bike. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Oh, it's nice and light. Um. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a little anemic, I guess. Yeah, but, I mean, who cares? I'm just, I just, I'm just pointing it out for, for being thorough. It's, you know, okay, it's fine. It's better than my Vespa, speed-wise. Quality-wise, I, I don't, yeah. I'm sure it's better than the Vespa. I love my Vespa, but Triumph makes a hell of a bike, even when they're not actually making it themselves. Okay, I quite like this, actually. Oh, it stops. Uh, there's no problem with stopping. Okay. Yep, nope. I feel like maybe it stops a little bit better than the Scrambler, but that just could be because I haven't had breakfast. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. What do we got? I'm in second gear, so let's fix that. Pulls away just nice, even though if I'm going uphill. Let's see if, ooh, okay. I thought that was a lane. <laughs> let's see if this has any power whatsoever. Oh yeah, okay. I'm not disappointed. My socks are still on, but I'm not disappointed. It's very comfortable. It's a little bit less upright than the Scrambler, I think. Um, but, uh, but it's super comfortable. The seat's nice. The um, leg positioning is perfect. The handlebar positioning is just about perfect. My lean over is pretty much neutral. I mean, I'm not straining in front or back. This would be a great first bike. This would be a great bike for an older person who doesn't need a whole lot of power, but just wants something that's a little bit nimble and easy to handle and take care of and something that's beautiful to look at. This, is, this could be the perfect bike for you, if that's who you are. I'm kind of like that, except now I'm spoiled. I get the T120 and um, I kind of like having that extra little power when I need it, but I rarely ever need it. So if I didn't have the T120, this bike would 
suit me just just fine. I would be happy as a clam. Uh, I don't know how it's going to do on uh, highway or you know anything above 65, but I can't legally find out. But we're gonna we're gonna find out anyway. Because uh, I'm I'm in my official capacity as press. Mm-hmm. Sure. Oh, it's nice and smooth right now. So I get this revving about 3,000 or so. I'll go in about 30. And uh, that felt nice. I was in fourth gear. So I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Clutch is nice and easy to work with. Um, the friction zone is exactly where you'd expect it to be. I think I missed my turn again. Maybe. I don't know. Who cares? This is way too much fun. Compliant, I would call it. Um. Hmm. I don't need this bike, but I want this bike now. You know what I mean? Like, this bike doesn't solve a problem for me. If I didn't have a scooter, this bike would solve a problem for me. This would be my sort of knockabout city bike, no doubt. And in fact, um, this bike is uh, five, six, seven, eight. It's three thousand dollars cheaper than um, a brand new Vespa GTS. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I have no problem with that. Yeah, it's a little vibrating when you get up into the uh, into the 8,000 RPM range. As you can see, I don't know if you can see the mirror is vibrating like crazy, but I mean, that's I guess that's to be expected. Okay, all right, everyone calm down. All right, there we go. Yeah. Oh yeah, it does get a little vibrating up in the upper ranges of the RPMs there, but... Mm. I think I could live with that. I wish wouldn't rev it that high. <laughs> this would be a perfect bike for a smaller person who's intimidated by uh, large, heavy bikes. I don't feel cramped as a five, as a person five ten. I bet you I would feel cramped if I were, you know, six two. Maybe not. I don't know. I'm not six two. I never will be. The cooling fan just came on, which is fine. It's just um, it's not very hot out. It's gonna be. It's going to be, what, late 50s, early 60s, temperature-wise, uh, in uh, Fahrenheit. And uh, I've only gone, you know, a few miles. But then again, I'm not sure who had the bike before I did. Because this is like test drive day, and could have been a street ninja. Riding around, torquing this thing up. <laughs> I just find it so comical to have to come down four gears when I come up to a stoplight when I've only been going 30 miles an hour. Yeah, it's a little buzzy. I feel like this is buzzier than the Scrambler, but it could just be that I was expecting a Scrambler to be buzzy, and I wasn't expecting this to be buzzy, so maybe they're exactly as buzzy. I don't know. It's not a problem, though. Just, just pointing it out. Oh, yeah. My oh, yeah, slow down, I bet. Nice and nimble. Even at speed. Maybe especially at speed. <laughs> That'll never not be funny to me. Going down 16 gears every time you come up to a stop sign. Very nice. Very nice.
Oh yeah. This pulls just fine up the hill. Couldn't want any more than that. 400 cc's is plenty of cc's. Let's just kick around in first and see what the difference is. Because I think I was in first right about here on the scrambler and had to switch over to second. And... This is fine. Ooh, it's vibrating though. <laughs> Fine, neutral, just fine. Okay. So, same, same build quality as the Scrambler, obviously. Um, very nice, very, very nice. I love, I love that. That just kind of floats my boat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's good looking, right? So uh, get the visor up and I mean single cylinders don't sound much better than that my friends and you can hear the cooling fan just came on sorry you'll be all right okay oh, I dig it I like this red too Yeah, I feel like I've been on this bike for years. It's completely approachable. It's completely uh, user-friendly. No surprises whatsoever. That's the thing. With the, with the Scrambler and with this, that's the thing. No surprises. 30 seconds after you get on these things and ride them, you know everything you need to know about them. And I really like that, actually. Far too often, motorcycles are... Uh, you know, on the overcomplicated side. These are very simple machines. Um, the Daytona I rode yesterday, it was a hoot, but it had all kinds of buttons and shit, and I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> this has, you know, an info button and some blinkers. And that's all I need. I could use cruise control, to be honest. Um, I also, I test drove a brand new T120 yesterday just to see what it felt like compared to my 2017. And the report on that, first of all, is it feels exactly the same, which is nice. <laughs> so I don't feel like I'm missing out. Um, but that bike had cruise control, and I played with that for about 30 seconds, and I'm sold. I would like to have cruise control installed on the uh, T120. So I'm going downhill, but I'm actually going to start off in second. I want to see. I want to see if that first gear is just there for show. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, it sounds so nice. Well, going downhill, you can start off at second, no problem. I mean, I can on my T122, but it, it doesn't enjoy it. This one doesn't seem to have a problem with it. Mm. I like that sound. Is the off-roading portion <laughs> of the trip. Mm. Alright. I would give this bike four stars, maybe five stars, depending on what you're looking for. If you're looking for your first bike, or you're looking for an easier bike as an older person, or you're short, or you just like this bike, five stars. If you're looking for, you know, your forever bike, I could see growing out of this. Um, because it's not as versatile as the Scrambler. You're not going to be taking this off-road, although I guess you could. Um, you might get a little... You might get a little tired of the buzzing and the limited speed on the highway and stuff like that. I don't know. Um, so, for that, four stars. But it, it's really a five-star bike. This is a nice... This is a nice bike. The 
This would be a perfect city bike. Yep. If this were in the showroom when I went to get my used T120 for basically the same price as this brand new, I think I may have opted for this. And I don't, I don't think I would have been disappointed. Um, there's some things that I do on my, one, on my T120 that I might not do on this bike, um, or at least aspire to do, like, you know, loaded, fairly heavy touring. I'm not sure I would do it on this bike. And I would have no problem doing it on the T120, um, even though it's not a touring bike per se. Um, so that's limiting to me. Um, would I do it on the Scrambler? Yes, I think I would. So maybe I would have gotten... No, I wouldn't have gotten the Scrambler. I wouldn't have gotten the Scrambler instead of the T120 because I was really looking for a road bike. And always kind of assumed that at some point... Okay, I'm, I'm starting off in third gear now by accident, and that actually is just fine. <laughs> um, I'm having a hard time getting in first. Here we go. Anyway, whatever I was saying, I stand by it. I dig it. I dig it. Not as much as the uh, Scrambler, but I dig it. Look at that. Look at that. Should we take that for a ride? I'm going to ask this guy if I should take that for a ride. I think I should take that for a ride. It's massive. Oh, it's got a shaft drive. I didn't realize it has a shaft drive. That's massive. Yeah. I like it. I like it. I would, um, I, I really dig the forks. I really do. Um, I, I actually just, I really like this bike. It's not for me, but I like it. That's my report. Five stars, four stars, depending on who you are. But it's definitely a five-star bike. All right. I love it. It's great. Yeah, it's a little buzzy.